Hi there. How are you doing? Today, let's talk about what is deep cloning in C Sharp. How do we do it in one line of code? And why is it important to understand it? Let's dive in. You know, there are two types of uh, variables in C Sharp, the value type and the reference type, right? Now, if a person object has an ID info variable, and ID info is reference type, when we clone person one, we get person two. The ID info that it refers to is not copied, although at this moment, person two also refers to the same ID info object. It is a shallow copy or shallow clone. However, if during the copy of person one, ID info one got copied as well to a separate instance, uh, it's called ID info two, then this is a deep clone. For shallow copy, now if you change the ID on person one, it will change the ID on person two because they reference to the same uh, ID object. When it is deep copy, since everything is copied, including the referenced object, they won't impact each other. I find these kind of uh, isolation attractive. The less those objects coupled, the less bug. With those said, to use deep clone or not, it's a case by case thing. It really depends on whether the intention is to share the reference to property or not. When it comes to which one to use, I always like to think it as if uh, I am going to clone a sheep. Do I want them to have the grass of their own? Well, sometimes the answer is yes and sometimes no. Okay, enough talking. Let's take a look at those uh, clones in code. Shallow clone is easy. There is a method named memberwise clone on every each object. It is a protected method, so you cannot call it directly on the instance, but it could be easily exposed. There's not too much to discuss. Just follow the example on this page, and I'll put a link in the description that you can reference later. Again, shallow copy is like uh, uh, cloning a sheep without uh, cloning the grass. Now let's take a look at the deep copy method on this page. It firstly does a shallow copy. Then it copies the properties on this method one by another manually. There are at least two disadvantages if doing it this way. First, the code is tedious. When there's a property uh, appending or removal from the object, you will have to remember to update the deep copy method. And forget to do that will lead to partial copy. Second, if the ID info has another reference type variable, you have to remember to deep clone that object too. For a simple clone copy to have that many caveats is not ideal. I'd like to show you a different approach that doesn't come with these caveats and it is easy to write. This is a simplified version of the code. The way we're going to do deep clone is to serialize it and then deserialize it back. Let's start with serialization. I'm using the JSON serializer here is because it comes with .NET 5 and relatively easy to use. Other common serializers uh, like the Newtonsoft JSON serializer, even binary serializer that comes along with the .NET that could be used as well. Now let's finish the code of deserialization. Now let me give it a format and uh, we'll see it in action. Welcome to our unit test. We created the person with the ID number 6365. For a shallow clone, we want to verify like after the clone, the ID info are the same, meaning they reference to the same object. And for a deep clone, of course, we want to verify they aren't the same. To further verify it, here we change the original uh, person's number to 6400. And we're going to verify the ID on the shallow clone object change along with it, while the one on the deep clone uh, wouldn't impact by it. Let's run this test. Now 
and passed. No surprise. Okay, that's good. But why do I need it? To have a discussion around that, I'll show you an example. This is based on a real bug. Let's pay attention to the first unit test here. We have a default configuration, which has a CPU trigger rate of 0.8, which is 80%. After we assign the default configuration to the configure uh, instance, there were actually some other operations. But then, under some condition, we need to update the CPU trigger rate to 90%. Because the code to get a default configuration was a shallow copy, the CPU trigger rate the config instance refers to and the default object refers to are the same. Although the intention um, is to update the CPU trigger rate on the config object, it actually updates the one on the default as well. Now after that, anything try to get a default object will have a CPU trigger rate of 90% rather than 80. And changing something like default values unintentionally is basically a recipe for bugs. Okay, once the issue is recognized, the fix is relatively simple. Instead of shallowing clone of the configuration for defaults, we should do deep clone. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in the code that I used for the discussion, I'll put a link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, take care.